back to the channel everyone and today we're going to be taking a look at the Pandora 3D clamshell. It's a portable arcade machine and has a built-in 10 inch HD screen. It was sent to me for review by the guys at Ploylab so thank you to them. I do have to point out that my opinions are my own and are not influenced by Ploylab sending me this review unit in any way. So with that let's dive right in and see exactly what you get. Surprisingly, you get a um, protective carry bag. It's not the best quality carrier bag, I have to say, um, but it's good enough to store the Pandora 3D clamshell inside when not using it to protect it from dust. Um, but yeah, it's there, so you might as well use it. You do get a user manual, but I'll be quite honest, it's quite useless unless you use Google Translate um, as everything is in Chinese. You do get a handy screwdriver um, in case you need to change the buttons and you also get four spare buttons and some spare screws also. With being in the UK I got a 12 volt 5 amp uh, charger um, which is handy. As well as the UK plug and cable which is a standard one. You also get a very long HDMI cable so you can connect it to the TV as well as a USB lead, which is again, very long. And you also get a aftermarket um, controller. Um, I have to say this controller compared to the previous one that I received with the uh, Pandora 18S Pro, this controller is much, much better. Um, it feels very light in the hand. It's not an expensive controller, but it does feel really, really good when you use it. Um, it's very responsive. The buttons are nice and clicky. Um, and uh, yeah, it's much better than the uh, previous controller. And here we have the actual Pandora 3D clamshell itself. It's made completely of metal, uh, so it's very heavy. It weighs about six kilograms. And I think it would have looked nicer if it had had a lower profile. As you can see, it has the flip up screen and the specs are it has a CPU ARM Cortex A9 quad core um, 2.4 G's. Um, a GPU, it's using a Mali 450MP8. It has a 1 gigabyte of memory. Video output is at 1280 by 720. Um, I must say, the screen really does look absolutely amazing when it's up, when it's up and running. Um, screen size is 10 inches and it plays um, 3D and 2D games, um, 160 of the 3D games and 3,858 of the 2D games. So just over 4,000 games altogether. When you first get it, you do have to screw on the uh, joystick um, ball on the top, which is very easy to do. The joystick itself is um, one of the Samwa uh, copies, but it's very responsive, nice clickiness to it. And then you also get the eight buttons. Again, some were clones, um, but they do have a nice feel to them. And then you have your buttons going along the top as well, which include your coin, pause, start, select, home, and D-pad, left stick. You also have buttons going down the side. These control the actual monitor, so you can uh, change the image quality. You also get a small battery capacity voltage monitor. Um, because it, this is portable, you can put uh, rechargeable batteries in and um, play it on the go. I haven't been able to try this feature, so I can't comment on it. So taking a look to the back, you have your two USB ports, the SD card slot. You have the button for the menu, for the home menu. Uh, you then have your uh, power input. Next to that, you have the HDMI, so you can connect it up to a TV. You then have your VGA output, so you can connect it to a monitor, and you get another USB port. And then next to that, you have your headphone socket and your volume uh, wheel. The sound quality on this is pretty decent. Um, it goes quite loud, but I wouldn't have it too loud uh, because of the metal casing. Um, it does become a little bit distorted. And also, 
unfortunately it doesn't come with built-in wi-fi um, this is a big shame for me um, because when you go into the settings it does actually show you the grayed out wi-fi option as well as the games market um, i have tried a dongle to see if that would work and unfortunately it didn't work so that is one massive feature that this unit does miss out on to one side you have the power button the reset button and also the switch to switch the light on and off on the coin and on the other side you have H another HDMI out and as you can see when you press that button the coin button will light up blue you can have that on or you can have it turned off when you first boot up you are greeted to this boot up screen which shows you the types of games that you can play some people may like this some people may not um, and I think you can actually switch this off in the menu as well so it won't play it as I mentioned earlier the um, clamshell has um, settings on the front for the actual monitor itself and um, when you first get this everything will be in Chinese so you will use need to use your phone um, and Google Translate to find out what the um, each option is and um, but once you change it over to English you can go through everything and set everything the way you want it it's quite easy to do so let's look at some um, footage of some of the games playing and um, like I say the 10 inch monitor is excellent the image quality is superb on it and um, I just hope it shows on this video majority of the games did run quite well um, most of the emulators um, are okay and um, you will find that some of the more intense 3d games won't work um, I did have a few issues with a couple of them running which you'll see later on um, but most of the ones that I tried worked really really well um, I'll show you some gameplay of this Sonic one which sometimes struggles um, and to be honest it played excellent um, I had no complaints with it so I'll go a little bit quiet now so you can listen to the sound as well In the video, uh, Sonic runs remarkably well on the Dreamcast. Um, very little f frame rate issues. Um, it just looks excellent. And on that 10 inch screen, it really does look superb and full HD. But that can't be said with all of the games, as you'll see with this one, um, with the Dreamcast. Um, this one has major issues with a screen tear and artifacts and really bad frame rate drops it just looks very very poor i was actually quite surprised that it was struggling this much to uh, play this particular type of game But yeah, it's uh, it's practically unplayable, as you can see. Uh, it's very poor. And then moving on to this one, uh, it plays extremely well. Um, excellent graphics, very sharp. Nice contrast in the colours. No slowdown. No frame rate issues plays excellent I have seen this game struggle on other platforms before um, but uh, it works great on this and the same goes for this one works very well no issues with the frame rate or glitches on the screen I have seen other machines struggle to play this game but as you can see it's working perfect 
This is actually a really good game. And again with Daytona on the Dreamcast, no issues again. Works perfect. Very little frame rate issues and very little glitching going on. What I would recommend though is to use the controller to play this. I wouldn't use the joystick. Um, just wasn't responsive en enough. Um, it was much better to play with the included controller. If we take a look at uh, some of the fighting games, um, this is where machines tend to struggle with, um, particularly if they're in 3D. Um, but the Pandora 3D clamshell actually worked quite well. There weren't um, massive issues, as you can see. It's nice and smooth. And again, it just looks absolutely stunning on this 10-inch screen. And then you'll come across another game, 3D game, which, as you can see, does have um, glitching and frame rate issues. Um, it's rather bizarre how some 3D games will work and some won't. I mean, this is still playable. But the, um, the breakup of the screen in the background was a little bit off-putting. But I could certainly still play it. What you'll find is playing games like Street Fighter um, in 2D, um, no issues whatsoever. Uh, this machine is more than capable of handling these type, type of games. Very smooth. No frame rate issues whatsoever, which is what you would expect. As you can see, no issues with the frame rate on this game either. 2D games just work spot on. And they really do look quite good on this uh, 10 inch screen. And just remember this is a portable unit. This is something that you're going to be able to carry around with you. Yes it's a little bit on the heavy side um, but you do get the handle on it. But with those uh, rechargeable batteries you know there aren't many units like this that you can uh, take out and about with you. This um, alien game um, is a bit strange because as you can tell, or as you can hear, there's no sound. However, when I tried playing it later on, there was sound on it. So I think that was more of an issue with the emulator um, not playing it correctly uh, the first time I booted it up. Um, but the sound did work later on and it sounded absolutely spot on again. Um, and it was just a, qu quite a fun game to play. Back to your 3D games. This one works fairly well. Not many issues. Nice smooth frame rate. No glitching. I think some of uh, with this machine just expect some of the 3D games will work uh, really well and some others might not. Um, and I don't think you'll be too far disappointed. Out of the ones that I've tried, there was only two or three that had glitches. Um, the rest of them actually did work really uh, quite well. PlayStation games worked well. There was no issues with them. As you can see in this gameplay, very, very smooth. No frame rate drops or glitching. 
when I was playing this game, uh, I preferred using the controller. It just felt better. It was more responsive. Mortal Kombat works well. I have to admit, I am absolutely terrible at playing this game. I always was as a child. So don't expect any special moves or anything. But as you can see, no glitching. Nice and smooth, no frame rate issues. It worked really well. Moving on to Mario Kart. Once again, worked without any issues. I would advise once more to use the controller. Uh, it's just more responsive. But as you can see, it just works spot on. No glitching, no frame rate issues. And once again on that 10 inch HD screen, it looked superb. This next one, I think this was Tekken 6, looks absolutely amazing on the screen. Played well, no frame rate issues, no glitching going on. It looks stunning. And compared to the other 3D games, um, I was blown away with this one. If you look at the detail, it's fantastic. And again, the same with this one. I think this one was Soul Calibur. Works really, really well. So it just goes to show, you know, it is a very capable machine. It's not all of the uh, 3D games that it struggles with. It is just certain ones. Um, as you can see, this one is just spot on again. Very little glitching going on. No frame rate issues. Just nice and smooth. Another enjoyable game. It's a game I used to love playing as a as a, a kid. With driving games, I can again play them with ease. As you can see, there's very little frame rate dropping going on. It's not super smooth, but it's certainly playable. Not much glitching going on either. I would again recommend playing this with the controller though, not with the joystick. As you can see, I'm all over the place. The joystick works much better. Uh, the controller, sorry. So there you have it everyone, uh, that's the Pandora 3D clamshell. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and share. And if you could subscribe to the channel, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, you can follow the link below if you would like to buy this from Ploylab. Thanks for watching.